89 cents to spend every week on all of your optional expenses. Okay. Entertainment, going out, extra food, gym membership, shopping, gym membership, right? All those extra things. That's all you have. Got it. Find a way to live on that 25%. Okay. Because we need the other 25%, Chad, for paying down our debt, for paying our, for putting into our savings account, giving away at church, investing. This is our future bucket. Okay. This is what the 50, 25, 25 rule would say. Okay. Now, if you own your own business, this is also another way that you could figure out how much do you need to actually pay yourself for your own salary? If we were abiding by the pay yourself first or the profit Profit first first. model, right? You would say, all right, well, how much should I pay myself? Well, I would do it on a model like this. I would take your monthly total required expenses and double it and make that the amount of money after after taxes, right? Yep. That you take home. Got it. So if I'm in a situation where I figured this out in the math, we'll use your example, came to $4,000 to cover my required expenses. You're saying I should pay myself $8,000 so that I can now live by the 50, 25, 25. After taxes. After taxes, yes. And that is what you're going to say. I'm gonna require my business to make an income so that I can live on this model get ahead of debt, get ahead of retirement, right? And, and live a more disciplined financial lifestyle. Okay, what if that $461 just, just isn't enough for me, Ben? What if I, I really like to have fun? I really like to go out fancy dinners and stuff like that. I wanna make a little bit more and this 50% isn't going to, or that 25% isn't gonna cover for me. Is there another model you have that I might be able to live by? Yeah, you might consider the 80-10-10 rule. Okay. The 80-10-10, it's a little bit simpler. Got it. But you're basically going to say that you're going to live on 80% of your total net income. So after taxes, yep. you're going to pay all your bills and all your personal expenses with 80% of your income. So if you are paying yourself $8,000 if we continue to follow that number. And that might be a family income. That may be, be what you and your spouse make together, right? Right. If you're doing this for a family After or, or taxes, your own. Yeah. 8,000. I get to keep 6,400 of it for your 80, 10, 10 model. Yep. Now $4,000 is going to still cover my required expenses. And now I'm left with $2,400 to have more fun in the entertainment world with. Yeah, 2,400 divided by 4.33, you'd have $554 So weekly. I get an extra $100 every week in that equation, in that example, if I need it because my kids are into sports activities that I want to be able to pay for a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, now where does the other 10 and 10 go in this situation? You are going to make a commitment that you're going to save and invest 10% of your income. Okay, so $800 in this scenario every month is going into saving slash investment. Cash account, 401k stock account, right? Into an account you're gonna use to buy real estate into some of the buckets of wealth, which we'll talk about in later in our, in our podcast. And we've touched on in earlier episodes that they can go back and hear a quick overview. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna say, I'm gonna make it a commitment to save $800 a month. Okay. Or whatever that 10% number is for you. Right. Now, what about that other 10% that I'm still left over with now? You're going to use 10% to pay down your debt, extra debt payments. Okay. Put into extra savings. So if I don't have any extra debt, I can put that towards extra savings. Okay. Yeah. Or for giving taking care of family, the community, church, that kind of stuff. Yep. 80, 10, 10. And we've talked about giving in past episodes and it'll come up again and again and again throughout our podcast because we all know how important it is to actually give. So I've got the 50, 25, 25, which is going to be much more aggressive. I'm going to live slightly 
tighter at this time in my life, yet I'm going to be saving more, or I've got the 80, 10, 10, which might give me a little more money in my pocket now, yet it's going to take me a little bit longer to also get where I want to get. These are two models. You don't have to use ours, but you got to have one. Okay. Everybody needs a, a model or a system. Remember systems make the ordinary extraordinary. Right. And we're all ordinary people trying to live an extraordinary life. So we need to put a model or a system in place for our finances, just like we do for our workouts and our businesses and faith and relationships and so on. We need a model for it. So Ben, I, I've learned over the years, knowing you and being around you that I, I just don't argue with you when it comes to models and systems. And if you're going to tell me, Chad, pick the 50, 25, 25, or pick the 80, 10, 10, that I'm going to pick one of those once I've sat down and had the conversation with my wife. Yet you're telling me I could say, Hey, I'm going to do the 70, 20, 10, because it still adds up to where that hundred percent is going. I just need some model and system to be able to follow. That's going to help me always have money going towards that investment, that savings part of my life. Yeah. And part of the reality check that we did in the previous episodes, Chad, was figuring out how much our debt is yep. and figuring out at what our actual income is and what our income is after taxes. We have to do this math and figure it out. Some of you might be listening to this and saying, that doesn't work for me. I only have 10% left over after I pay everything. Right. Well, in that case, you might say, all right, for the next year, until I can increase my income or reduce my expenses. Upcoming episodes. Right, we're going to live on 95.5. I'm gonna put 5% into savings and 5% yep. into paying off my debt. It's about coming up with a model that you can live with. You're gonna to have to figure it out. Some of you are looking at your expenses and looking at your income and saying, I don't make enough or I have too much expenses. I have zero or I have a negative amount. Yep. Which means we're gonna to have to make some changes and that's the goal of this podcast is not for you guys to all be in the same position, but for you to make a commitment that you want to change stuff. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Number okay. one, do some homework tonight, write down how much can you actually afford to save on a monthly basis from your income that you have currently? Which means we need to know the numbers that we did in the reality check. Cause I need to know how much I'm spending every month required. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And write it down. Remember when I started doing this, I was saving $50 a month sure. into four or five accounts. So I was only saving $200 a month. Right. And, and that was hard some months, but I figured it out and I just made a commitment that I'm going to save that. And over time, I actually was able to increase it and dramatically change my life. The next question, after you figure that out, how much can you actually save today? I want you to ask yourself the question based on the reality check for retirement, right? Uh, episode we did. Yep. Is that enough to hit my goals? Okay. Is that going to help me get to where I want to get? Is that going to help me get to a position where I can buy my house, where I can pay off my debt, where I can start planning for retirement? Okay. And if it isn't your last question, I want you to ask yourself journal, write it down. What can I do to change that right away? Mm. Not tomorrow, not next year, not when things get better, I'll make some changes. Next year, things are gonna be different. What can you do right fricking now to make changes? And you know, right fricking now, as you say, Ben, if we realize what's going on around us, a lot of those other expenses aren't happening right now. We don't have gym memberships. We're not eating out at restaurants right now. Our kids aren't in sports or the choir or anything that we have to pay extra for that money should be going towards paying down debt or investments right now if we're financially in a position to be able to do that, not just say, well, I'm just gonna wait. Is that what you're telling us? D during interesting times like we're in today, you might learn that your family can live on a lot less because you've given up all those other luxuries that you're used to. Right. You might realize, like our friend Dave said, that my family's eating four times as much <laughs> because they're all stuck at home, right? Yep. And we may need to figure out some other plans on how we can shop or grocery shop a little bit more affordably during times like this. We're just going to buy Dave a padlock for the pantry to keep the kids out of it. Yeah, I need a padlock for my pantry too. Yes, I'm gonna, we'll talk about that. After. I'm going to get the COVID plus 19 LBs <laughs> 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 disease, I think, or do this whole chaos. You know, Chad, we're, we're sitting back and we're asking ourselves, what can I do to change that right now? Yep. My recommendation is you learn to save like a pro. Yep. In the previous episodes, I've said, please print out your bank statements. Right print out your credit card statements, sit down with them 
grab three highlighters, grab a red highlighter, a green and a yellow one, and look at your expenses item by item and highlight it green if you have to keep it, yellow if you think you could negotiate it, potentially go without it or switch to a better service. Okay. And red if you know you can stop spending right now that expense, okay, get so, rid of it or go without. So green is it's going forward with us. We, we've got to keep this one. It's required. It's right. your rent or it's your mortgage payment. It's those things, right? Okay. Yellow is the caution. Could we get rid of it? Could we renegotiate it? Could we call our cable company and get a promo that they've got right now? Could we cancel the commercial free Hulu and save a few bucks on that one if we even needed to keep Hulu at all? And then red is stop paying immediately. We're just going to go without. We're going to get rid of it. We We're going to cancel that. it, right? Got Turns it. out we don't need two separate Netflix accounts. Got it. Sure, right? yeah. I haven't been to the gym in six months. I can stop you paying for it. don't that one. Right? Yeah. There's different things like, hey, maybe I'm going to go without some services that I've just become used to because I'm lazy, right? And I'm just going to stop doing that. Sure, maybe I'm not my, driving as much. I don't need Sirius XM right now. You and I, we don't need our bikini waxes anymore. No, I'm cutting back on those. Yeah, right? We, we can go without some things going forward. It's going to challenge you to save like a pro and do our highlighter experiment. That's your homework tonight. And you're right? doing this every month because every month's going to be different. There might be an expense that was an annual one that pops up and you just might be in a different situation every month and say, you know what? Last month we didn't think we could do without that. It was yellow. Now it just became red. We've realized we didn't use it in 30 days. Do you wake up 20 pounds overweight? I hope not. No, no. How do you end up 20 pounds heavier? I've seen you 20 pounds heavier, Chad. Oh, yes, you have. Uh, one blizzard at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. One blizzard at a time over months and months. Yes. You don't end up broke in one month, right, normally either. What happens, it's a compounding effect of poor expense management where you continue to add small little things to your business or small little things to your life that you feel like uh, it's only $13 a month to get this VCR from Sears on the credit card, right? right. I went through that experience when I got my first credit card. <laughs> it's only $19 a month for this additional thing. And you wake up and it's actually 500 a month because you've gotten all these 10 or $15 a month things. Sure. You can kill yourself slowly financially by doing that. I heard somebody say once, I think it was Gary Keller, uh, he said, sometimes you're losing so slowly you think you're winning. Oh, say that again? Sometimes you're losing so slowly you think you're winning. Hmm. And we have to avoid this slow financial grind to our financial ex implosion, right? Sure. And do something about it right away. So Chad, let's talk about a list of things that we came up with on how to actually save like a pro. Yeah, you've got your list, Ben. It's the 10 ways to save like a pro. If I had the drum roll, I would insert it here for you. I'll give you a little, and Dave hated that. Yet Ben, here we go. Number one. Pay yourself first. Okay, tell me a little bit more. You're gonna decide how much your business or how much you need for your required expenses. And you're going to take that off the table right away. Okay. A way to do that might be that you take 50% of your paycheck right away and you put it into a bank account called required expenses. And that's sure. where you pay your mortgage, right? That's where you pay your utilities, all the required stuff. Yep. You, if you're going to live by the 50, 25, 25 rule, you might take 25 of your paycheck, take it out in cash, put it in an envelope for each week of the month, divide that up, and that's the amount of money that you have in cash for Starbucks, for going out, for the movies, for shopping, right? And the other 25% you put into a savings account, preferably at a different bank that you don't have a credit card for, debit yes. card you don't have a check for, and it's hard to get to. That's where you go to the credit union or whatever that might be, right? I still have my savings at the Boeing Employees Credit Union, right? Nice. Some of those other other banks that are they're inconvenient for me to go to, and I don't carry a debit card for them. Right. It's a forced savings mechanism. So you're going to pay yourself first and take that money into your bank account. All right, man. Number two. We're going to make a budget and we're going to stick to it. We're going to pick a model, Chad, 80, 10, 10, 50, 50 25, 25. Yeah. Or, 90, 10, wh whatever you yeah. have to do today, we're going to pick it and we're going to live by it for one month. Okay. Make a promise, make a commitment that we're going to live by this model for one month and see how it feels. Okay. 
Number three, we're going to consolidate and or eliminate debt by looking at the highest interest rates, negotiating with our credit cards or other debt people and saying, hey, can we get the rate down? Is something we can do? What can we do to reduce those liabilities? You'll find that almost everything is negotiable. And you don't need to call those companies that are advertising to you on TV to do it for you. They're just going to take money from you that you don't have to waste at this situation. Make those calls, see what you can negotiate. All yeah. right. So we got pay yourself first. We got make a budget and stick to it. We got consolidate and eliminate debt. Number four, Ben. <laughs> Revisit the bills on a monthly basis to see where you're cut, cut your spending. Do the highlighter experiment every month. Okay, so let's play the highlighter game each and every month as they come in. Number five? We're going to pay attention to the little things that add up. That one extra cupcake every day, mm -hmm. you wake up at the end of the year and, and you're five or 10 pounds heavier. Sure. It's the same way where you cut 300 calories every Over day out of your diet, right? Yeah. You wake up end of the year, it's made a big difference. And it's not just that. We'll talk about that on another episode. So everyone don't run out and just cut 300 calories and think it worked. Yeah, you're right. It's that going to Starbucks one extra time. It's the ordering the venti instead of, I don't even know the sizes they have, but the smaller one, those things can add up. Absolutely, Ben. All right, number six. You know, take advantage of some of the em employee, employer, or government options. In Such as? In today, let's look and see what sort of paycheck programs the SBA is doing for the disaster, right? right? Look at all the options that the government is, is, is offering for this bailout for the impacts of, of the virus that's going on today. Okay, what if we were just in a normal world? What, what comes to mind here? Is that like the 401k that's being matched by your employer? Yeah, so yeah. So you should max out that is what you're saying. Yeah, and it reduces the amount of money that you have to pay in taxes because that comes out pre-tax. Right. Right, you're looking for little things that you can do to take advantage of programs that the government or your employers put in place. Okay. Got it. Next, number seven. You know, stop collecting stuff. Start selling it. Aww. Find a way to make an extra couple hundred dollars, 500 or $1,000 every month off of selling the clothes, the hunting gear, the camo, the fun stuff, the extra stuff that you have in your world. Just, just try to find some extra ways to bring in some extra income. So put it on eBay, put it on Craigslist, put it on one of those sites, take it to a store that buys back those products that can then resell them. Yeah. Okay. Number eight. You know, eat in instead of, instead of dining out. That's a simple one. But there also might be things where you said, you know what? I know that when I, when I take a, a group of four or five people out for Thai food, Chad, it is like 26 bucks. Yep. If I take four or five people out to the steak place, it's $150. Yep. I'm just as happy at the end of the Thai food, right? There's better ways we can make sacrifices and make decisions. And eating out uh, or eating in instead of dining out doesn't mean just bringing it home. That actually means we're cooking the meals. We're saving a lot of money that way, Ben. One of my friends is playing this great game of saving like crazy uh, with their with their children. And when the children ask a question like, hey, can we go for ice cream or can we get popcorn or do something like that? They say, all right, we'll give you the choice. Well, you can have that or we'll take the money that we would have spent on that. And when we get home, we'll give you half of it to put into your savings account. So if ice cream would have been $10, they would go back to the kids and say, all right, we're going to give you $5 to put into your savings account. It's teaching them that they can win by helping the family save money as well. I don't know, Ben. I might pick the ice cream still. <laughs> well, you and I would. We did. The blizzards, plenty of them. All right, number nine. Uh, you know, save your excess income. Save bonuses, tax refunds, gift cards, cash. Don't spend those. Hmm. Don't live on them. Put them somewhere else. Use them for investments or using them for paying off your debt. Don't use it as a new reason to go to Nordstrom's or Cabela's or wherever you go. Just use that to improve your financial situation. So the money I have in my Amazon account right now to sit there until I actually need it and can save me money. Don't just go buy something because they gave me some money. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. We got the 10 ways to save like a pro. Number one, was pay yourself first. Number two, make a budget and stick to it. Number three, consolidate and eliminate debt. Number four, revisit your bills and see where you can cut your spending. Number five, pay attention to the little things that add up. 
Number six, take full advantage of employer and government options. Number seven, stop collecting things, start selling them. Number eight, eat in instead of dining out. Number nine, save bonuses, tax refunds, gift cards, things like that. And Ben, number 10 is? You know, master the 30 day rule, Chad. You wait 30 days to decide on any big purchases. Before you and your family commit to something, Put some time between it. Don't buy anything right away. Even if you have to wait a day or two, save stuff in your shopping cart for a day before purchasing online. Just stop making the immediate purchase. That will make a big difference. It'll allow you and the family to think on, do you really need this or not? And you'll have some time to reflect and you won't have these, these purchase regrets that so many of us have gotten on the, on the Peloton that's sitting in our basement or these different items that we saw and we bought, right? It, we we got to put some time in there and allow the emotions to fade away so that we can make smart decisions. So buyer's remorse, prevent buyer's remorse by waiting 30 days before making any major purchase. We haven't taught you how to save like crazy, but we've got you thinking in the right direction. Yep. We've explained that you got to have a model you got to choose it. You got to commit to it. We've given you some tips on how to look at expenses. We've given you some homework to do, to journal on some questions and to go through the highlighter worksheet. And we've given you some ways that you can save like a pro. If you're doing this, you've done the reality check, you're well on the path of understanding wealth and getting into a better financial uh, situation at the end of this year. Okay. And I'm looking forward to the next one because I know you're going to talk to us now about becoming a student of wealth, which is something that you have become in your world because it was so important to you and has helped you come up with a lot of this information. So if you are out there and you are enjoying the podcast, we're going to ask you to share it with somebody. We're going to ask you to reach out to your accountability partner, your spouse, your business partner, your coach, whoever might help you with some of this financial stuff, send them the podcast episode so that they can have the same conversation that you can. You know, I'd even recommend, Chad, hmm. that as you're, as, you're, as you're getting out there, maybe you're doing some uh, remote happy hours via Zoom right now. Yes. Or we work through this and we start hanging out with our friends again. Since we're giving you homework and assignments and things to talk about, turn this into a weekly or a monthly group where you get together, you listen to the episode, and you sit down and you do the homework together. Make this part of an exercise that you do with a group. So you and your friends and your family, right? You're all working towards changing your financial life. Listen to the podcast, do the homework, right? And then have a great discussion and talk about how these things are making changes in your life. All right, Bob, I love when Ben and I just get rolling on a conversation, the way we're sitting, we just lock eyes on it. And every now and then I'll look over and you're just sitting there just staring like you are just so lost in thought of what's going on in the conversation. Clue me into what's going on behind those eyes right well, now. Well, in some ways I, I feel really humbled and honored to like be here with you guys having this discussion, but in many ways I'm still just a student of this stuff. And so as I'm sitting here listening to me, that, the, that highlighter exercise is, has been one of the, the best things that my wife and I have done is just getting together and sitting down and really taking a, you know, just a, a, a hard look at where our money goes every month. And, you know, we talked, I had brought up in that very first episode, the idea that like, as your income increases, your lifestyle increases right with it. And if you're not paying attention to that, you know, you're keeping up with the Joneses and all of a sudden you're making twice as much money as you made before, but you still don't have anything left. That, that exercise of examining your expenses every single month, because, you know, some stuff pops up yearly once a year. And if I only did it every couple months, I, I might miss those types of expenses. It's such a powerful exercise. It's really the foundation for all of these other, these other, you know, 10 tips to save like a pro is that idea that I got to know where my money's going before I can ever start saving it. So I, I, I zone out over here sometimes because I just feel like a student in these things just as much as I'm sitting here, you know, kind of hosting this with us. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, same thing. You know, one of the things that I've learned from all of this is as you're going through that, I will make sure to actually use the reminders on my phone to warn me when like my cable contract is a month before it's about to expire. Cause don't they always get you? Yeah. 
And it gives me that chance to call up and say, aha, what's the current promo before all of a sudden my, my rape wife's a master with that kind of thing. There's always a reminder for some upcoming bill that's going to change or promo that's going to expire or, you know, the, the free trial, right? How many free trials have you signed up for where all of a sudden 30 days later, like bangs your credit card and you're like, oh, dang, I forgot about that. Like, so yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a good tip. And you know what? Speaking of free trials. We're not even going to ever charge you for this podcast. No, that's right. It is a free trial on the podcast. We're going to keep giving it to you again and again and bringing you this wonderful information, just like we're bringing you the Wealth Series right now for that free opportunity. Make sure you're joining us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash win, make, give so that you can get into the conversation. Also, feel free to check out winmakegive.com slash wealth to make sure you're getting all the materials for these exercises that we're sending you home with. Until our next episode, we hope that you'll take a moment and rate us and review the podcast wherever it is you listen to podcasts. And until the next time, remember, wash those hands and as always, do good. All righty. So who saved like crazy while we were watching? Did you save like tons of money just in the last 32 minutes? Oh, I love it. All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the, the, uh, what you just heard, and then we'll just kind of take a quick two-minute jump back to Friday and, and talk a little bit about uh, the retirement piece again. What did you hear that was helpful to you today in terms of saving like crazy? The percentages. Yeah, those models, right? The 50-25-25 model or the 80-10-10. I like those. Anybody want to talk about them? Anybody want to give me your thoughts on which makes sense to you? Hey, Rick. Hey. I always find it challenging where our income fluctuates. And I know you say we get to determine what that is. But I always find it hard to create a budget when, you know, you might have five closings one month and one the next. So it's always a challenge for us when we, when we talk about really creating a budget. So that's just sort of like my first thought. And I think that, and I, and I appreciate that, right? Because it, it, it is a challenge, but it's not one that doesn't have a solution. And so the, the idea of, uh, and, and the solution is not me saying, we'll just make more money. Right, that's because that that's that's one of the easiest solutions ever, right? So just just make more, and then it doesn't it doesn't matter? That's not my point. My point in this is I I've been teaching the idea that our businesses should pay us a salary for fifteen or so years, right? And whenever anybody asks me, well, what what is that? How do we determine what that salary is? I never really had a good answer. Right? My answer has always been, well, you have to kind of figure that out based on, you know, you and your, your business and your, your home life, your, your finances and whatnot. And I was so excited when Ben gave us the answer to that question. Because what he said is, if you're looking at the 50-25-25 model, where 50% of, uh, of your take home pays your, your bills and then the 25 goes to optional and the 25 goes to... Um, goes to the debt reduction and or investing or savings. He, what he talked about was, well, what if from your business, you just doubled that number and that's the salary, right? He kind of gave us a formula. And so once you, have, once you determine the salary that your business is going to pay you, I think it evens out the, we have five closings one month and one closing the next month, right? Because when the five closings happen and, and the five, you know, you've, you've just made 60 or $75,000 that month. Well, but if your salary for your household, for, from your business to your household is, I don't know, $10,000, well then that, that the other $65,000 you made in the because you had five closing that's closings that month doesn't get transferred 
from your business accounts to your personal accounts. It sits there knowing full well that you might have a one closing month and now you've only made $8,000. So now you've got to take the $8,000 you made that one month combined with the, with the $2,000 from the 65 you saved so you can still meet payroll. I think that more than anything is how you balance out the, the inconsistency. Yes, focusing on constantly taking new listings is the other way to do that because when you're constantly focused on taking new listings, more buyers come your way, more listings come your way, more consistency and in income and simply more income comes your way. And as you're doing that, if you'll, if you'll look at your business as a business that has an employee that gets paid a salary and that employee is you, I think these models speak so specifically to allowing you to figure out what you really need from your business. And then run the model. So if, if $10,000 is it and you're in the 50, 25, 25, well, $5,000 of that money goes to pay your bills, right? That's how you live. You pay the mortgage, you pay all, you pay the, all the stuff. And then $2,500 goes into savings and then $2,500 gets to be that whatever. Maybe it's $8,000, maybe it's $14,000, maybe it's $4,000, right? You get to determine what that is based on your numbers. <clears throat> does that help at all, Kim? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. I mean, it's really knowing kind of what your income is going to be at the end of the year. So then you can kind of divide it out over the months and whether you have a light month or a heavy month, it has a holding place. And then yes. you kind of divide it out over the months. Yeah, it, it is that. And what's cool, what, what I learned by doing that um, in, in my business, in my listings and sales business, uh, what I learned was there were, we knew months in advance based on our pendings, like when we had to start pedaling faster. Like, okay, so the, 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 pen, the pendings are a little light. Like, what are we going to do in March? What are we going to do in whatever? And so then we had to start pedaling a little faster to say, oh my, we, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to run out and not be able to meet payroll. And for us, meeting payroll didn't just mean paying our assistant, it meant paying our assistant and us. And if other things inside of the business didn't get paid, well, we make sure we met payroll. It's a, it's a, it's a, a, a mental shift from we had a closing all of that money goes to the household. Because you've got to run, if you don't run the business like a business first, the, the business itself is 100% of that is just going to the household and there's nothing left in the business. And you, you, you don't have the opportunity to even out the inconsistencies. I, I also didn't say this was, this was easy. Right? Because so, sometimes it's challenging. My advice to people who are looking to do this for the first time is look ahead. Book a month with four or five closings. Have a heavier month and, and make the decision to start that month. Like look ahead and say, oh, look, I'm, I have, I have you know, four closings coming up in, in, uh, in July. Awesome. And so if your income in July is heavier than maybe a, a, another month, make that the month that you start. And don't disperse everything in July. Do this, do this exercise, figure out what the, what the save like crazy model is for you and start living by that and only, and only disperse X, keep money in the business. It will feel weird at first. Trust me, I've been there, I get it. Right? But, it, but when you start to really live by that rule, it starts to set you up for so much more. And what I mean so much more is, I, I mean, it sets you up for um, consistency. It sets you up to be able to fund certain accounts that never seem to get funded, right? How many of us have accounts 
you know, my investment account, my savings account, my vacation account, my whatever account you have that just never seems to get funded because there's always some, some other bill to pay with the, with the money. Ah, oh, it drives me berserk. But it starts to set you up for always being able to fund the ones you want to fund. Here's the other thing it does. It takes tough times and it puts some distance between you and tough times. I'll be honest, the, 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 um, you may have heard me say this, but I'll, I'll say it real quick. In, in, uh, in our businesses, in our market centers, I, I was not a favorite for many, many years. I was not the favorite partner because, because the decision that was made was to not disperse all the profits. It was to save and save and save and save and save so that our businesses had cushion, right? Each of our market centers now has six to seven months of expenses saved in cash set aside. Between the, between the two, that's a million dollars. That's not like no money. That's a million dollars. And so when this whole thing started to happen to us in, 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 in March, I panicked less than maybe I would have if we had dispersed all the profits and there were no reserves to run the companies just in case we got shut down, just in case like our friends in New York, we could not sell real estate. Instead, I got to, I got to make decisions about how we would run the companies. I got to make decisions about, about eliminating desk fees for the foreseeable future. I got to make decisions that would help you guys because we did prudent things with the money and didn't just disperse. Oh, we made it, so now we get to take it. Trust me, my portion of that million dollars is a lot. I, I would have loved to have had that sitting in my account to go and spend, to go and travel, to go and invest it, to go and buy another property, all that stuff. But that didn't seem like the, the prudent way to run the business. And I got a lot of, I got a lot of, I shouldn't say it that way. I got a lot of crap for that from our partners who had expectations. We made money. I want my money. Well, I get it. And once we hit the six month mark, I'm more than happy to give it to you. But until we do, that money is going to stay in the business. I don't know how helpful that is. But I, I just want you to hear the idea of, of making the decision about where the money stays. The second it comes into your house, it's a whole lot easier for it to vanish. <clears throat> what else did you hear? You heard nothing else? Hey, Rick. Yeah. Um, I spent the weekend um, doing the whole expenses and retirement. and uh, That was kind of miserable. But I did have a question. Today, he talked about looking at your optional monthly expenses. And there's a category in there. And it says savings slash 401k. And that's in the optional expenses category. So my question is, if I have a number in there, right, and I do the 50, 25, 25, am I kind of like, you can never oversave, don't, don't get me wrong, but it seems like it's then now a really hefty number because I've got savings in 401k that I'm monthly planning on, but now I'm taking 25% um, do you know what I'm getting at? I'm probably I not. No, I, I do. And, and so I don't want to put words in your mouth. So let me, let me, let me repeat what I think you're okay. asking and tell me if I'm right. Okay. So you're, you're assuming that one of your expenses, that even though it's listed as optional, you're doing every single month. So maybe, more, maybe for you, it's really more of a required expense, right, than optional expense. And, and you're funding that 401k. And now the 25% is also going to be bent on savings. Maybe for you, 
those are one and the same. Maybe, maybe your 25%, you, you subtract out the X number of dollars you're saving every month to fund the 401k from that 25%, and you, you only save the remainder. Maybe the 25% is what you're putting in there, you know, 100% of it. And so you've, that you've just earmarked your savings up, um, target as that 401k. And, and I think that, Nancy, the answer really, was that what you were asking? Yes, correct. Okay. So, so, so that's my answer. I think that you have, what's cool about it is, and, and knowing Ben, uh, you, know, you heard Ben say it. Look, so if the 50-25-25 rule doesn't work for you, well, then try the 80-10-10. And if the 80-10-10 doesn't work, maybe what you have to do is a 95 and 5 for a while until you can move to an 80, 10, and 10, right? Well, what Ben is saying is live the life that you want to live. What I'll add to it that he doesn't say uh, is the, the main way you get ahead is by creating some version of sacrifice, right? And I don't say that masochistically. I've just learned over time that it's, it's difficult to spend your money on all of the things that you want to spend it on all the time and still have it to invest and buy assets. <laughs> I, I haven't quite figured out how to make that make sense, right? So you're either diverting it to do one thing that creates opportunity for you for tomorrow at the expense of something today, or you're doing the thing today, but then there's the opportunity cost of you're not doing the thing tomorrow. The other thing I'll say to Nancy's question is, is if you're doing 50, 25, 25, maybe it's 50% of your required expenses, 25% of the optional, maybe, maybe, that's where your, um, maybe that's where your 401k shows up because in Ben's list it is, does say optional. So maybe that money goes to the 401k and the other 25% you start investing with, right? Because there's two different things. There's savings and then there's investments. Right, and one of the things that, that I've learned is the, the idea, I've been, I've been devoting 100% of my money, of my, of my non-required expense money, to investments. Well, that's not 100% true. Investments and college savings, right? Those are the two, those are two things that the, the, extra, the extra money funds. And, and what I've learned recently, frankly, by listening to, to Ben's session on retirement, is that there's a whole other section that I'm missing, which is the retirement savings portion, right? I don't have retirement savings. I own properties that I always assumed would just pay for my retirement. And so now I'm looking at it a little differently saying, there is an extra category there that I've been ignoring. And so I don't have a 401k, I don't have a SEP, I don't have a lot of the things that many of you guys have because I've been so laser focused on buying more properties. And so now I'm looking to expand that and say, okay, so maybe what I need to do is take some of the 25% in, 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 from the investment side, keep some of my, some of my um, optional money, keep the 25% diving into my investments and make some of that optional money, that other 25% fund some, um, some retirement savings. And so maybe what that means is I'm cutting, I'm cutting vacation money in half for a couple of years so I can divert funds into this retirement account. Or what it really says to me, if, if I'm being honest, is I look at that and say, okay, I have to figure out a way to make some more money each year because I don't want to reduce my vacation account, I, but I need to fund this 401k or SEP or whatever that I'm going to be building. Where is that money coming from? Is it time for another... Is it time for to increase profit share? Is it time for another business? Is it time to do whatever it is to fund that? I don't know, am I talking in circles? Is this, is this all helpful? Okay, good. Nancy says yes, I'll tell him yes, even though I'm confused by what the hell he's saying. <laughs> Here's a simpler way to say what I'm saying. You, have to, you should look at all this and say, you know what, here's the income I have to work with today. Here's how I'm going to figure out exactly which, what, what buckets this goes into. And as long as that is something that you can create with consistency, utilizing that idea of paying yourself a salary, 
then you should be excited by what you've built. If it's 40, 30, 30, or you know, whatever the numbers are, right? Your version makes sense in your financial world. And then the second piece of this is to make sure you've done the work from Friday, which is really designing what you want your retirement to look like, figuring out what that number is for you to live the, the life you want to live each month in retirement, and then backing into what do I have set up? What's Social Security going to be? What's my pa passive income? What's my profit share? What does all that contribute? Subtract it from my number. Now I'm less left with, okay, I need, I need an extra $100,000 a year to make this all work. And using that chart, the 4% rule, understanding that $100,000 a year is $2.5 million in retirement savings. Now I have a plan. Okay, so if that's the piece I'm missing, I have to now figure out, right, for me, I have 20 years to make that happen. How do, how do I figure out $2.5 million in retirement savings in 20 years. And that's when I go to somebody who knows more than I do and say, okay, here's, here's what I have to start this with. What would I have to invest every single month at a, an assumed rate of return for 20 years to come out with two and a half million dollars? And if I'm making that now, then I set that up on automatic draft and it just funds that thing. If I'm not making it, I have to figure out how to make that money. Right? I can tell you right now, I'm not making what I need to make to fund my $5 million retirement account, which is what I determined I need to have to, to live the life I want to live, or at least have it as a goal. I don't make enough money to fund $5 million in 20 years. So now it's, now, now it's got my brain going, okay, what am I going to do? How can I take what I do earn and turn it into more so I'm earning more to fund that so in 20 years I have what I need so I can step out, step back, and live the life I want to live. And maybe it's not 20 years. That was, what, that was a discussion over the weekend. Over the weekend, our discussion in my house was, well, what if it's not 20 years? What if we only have 10 years? right? Because I'm far younger. And yet that is true. Steve's seven and a half years older than I am. So when I'm 70, he's almost 78. And so as we we're talking that through, he was like, well, now wait a minute. <laughs> Are you sure we have? So do I have to keep working until I'm 78? So you're seven? I said, yes, absolutely. Start taking those vitamins, bucko. Right, so now we're starting to back it down. Okay, what if, that, what if we're talking about 10 years? Holy crap, now what do we do to, to find $5 million in 10 years? Is that doable? Certainly. Is it doable with what I'm doing right now? Not by a long shot. Not by a long shot. So that's, that's why I get so excited with these conversations because it, for me, it's, it's thinking about things in a way that I've never thought about it before, looking at what the end goal is and backing it out, and then bringing, bringing what's real for me, just like you need to bring what's real for you to the table and determining what it is you're willing to sacrifice, determining do you make enough money to, to, to create these, these opportunities? And if you don't, do you want to? And if the answer is yes, how are you going to do that? Is it more listings and sales? Are you, just going, are you going to make more in your real estate listings and sales business? Are you going to now start to leverage your listings and sales business and start growing via people, via a team? Are you going to start another business? Are you going to start buying investment properties? Are you going to start flipping houses? Are you going to, to open a coffee shop on the weekend? You know, what, what are you going to do to, are you, are, you going to, are you going to build your profit share? Like you're going to spend the next 18 months and say, I don't care who thinks I'm the most aggressive person in Fairfield County. I am going to build my profit share until people like see me coming and run the opposite direction. Because along the way, I will have had 10 or 15 people say, yes, name me. And now I'm on the road to $100,000 or more a year in profit share.
right? So there's all these different opportunities that you can start looking at and putting in place to say, this is how I'll do it. But until you know what the end result is, the end goal is, it's hard to figure out where the gaps are. And that's, that's been a gift that, that Ben has given to, to my household is the idea of figuring out what the gaps are. Because we hadn't done that. We hadn't figured out where, where, where we needed to be versus where we are today. I think Nancy used the word brutal, right, before. Those, there, there's some brutal conversations you get to have with yourself. It's like you, you, look at, you look at your financial picture and think, you know, it's easy when you're making money, it's easy to look at that and say, wow, you know what, I'm all that, that's, that's awesome. Until, until Ben starts throwing numbers around like millions of dollars in a retirement account to make sure that you have the, the, the life, the tail end of your life that you want, I was reminded, I know I'm talking a lot, but I want to just give you one more thought. I was reminded uh, um, earlier today, um, somebody said to me, um, somebody said to me, uh, do you remember when we had this conversation with somebody who, who looked at, uh, I can't remember exactly what the circumstance was, but it was, it was a client or something. And this person said, wow, that person, you know, I, I saw their, I, they're buying this house and I saw their, their finances and they were so worried about, about spending an extra you know, $10,000 on this house, they have $700,000 in savings. It's like they're set for life. And I thought, ooh, you know what? I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but $700,000 sitting in an account, that does not create a 20 or 30 year opportunity for retirement for you, right? Because, because $700,000 by Ben's own, own numbers right, creates about thirty-five dollars or $40,000 a year in income for you over 20 or 30 years. Now, there are parts of the world where you could go and live pretty nicely for $40,000 a year, but you're certainly not staying here, right? You're certainly not traveling the world. You're certainly not, you know, bringing your family on vacations or, or helping your kids fund their kids' college or doing all the other things, right? There's not a whole lot of legacy involved in that. You'll, you'll skate into the, into the grave with, with you know, pennies to spare. And that's only if you don't live as long. <clears throat> so the, the reality check around that, I think is, is just so, so important, right? It's so important. And if you're, if you're any, any year younger than, than 50, it's a wake up call none too soon. If you're any year older than 50, right, you're in a position of really having to look at what you've, what you, what you've got. You know, Steve's gonna be 58 years old in, in, uh, in October. And so all of a sudden we're like looking at that thinking, oh man, right, retirement, there's an opportunity in like in four years, if you were to take early retirement, four years. Four years goes like that. And so it's just putting it all in perspective, which has been massively helpful to me. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just yammering at it away because I just get so excited about the opportunity of, of looking in the mirror and really seeing this for what it is. And I think the, the regardless of where you are financially and regardless of the age you are, there's still time to, to build so that you have better for when you wanna step away for good, right? And that to me is so crazy exciting because it, it's all about opportunity. And then where you take it and how you build what you need to build once you know what you need to build, oh, that's the exciting part. All right, I, I, I used up all of our time. I, I apologize. I, I'm, I promise on Wednesday I will be quieter. But, the, but the, the, um, this has been like pumping through my veins for the last week or so. Um, and the opportunity to get in, to discuss it with you is, is like more than I can contain. Um, any other thoughts today before we uh, finish this episode or the, the, the safety uh, retirement episode? Okay, so if nothing else, here's your homework. No, no. Oh, where are we? Stephanie. No, I was just going to say, no, thank you very much, because it, it was definitely an eye-opener. I'm your age, so, yeah. 
<laughs> Good exercise. You mean, you mean younger than springtime, Stephanie? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and so, so the, and here's the last thing I'll say. The best advice that, that, um, that I could give you today is advice that I keep hearing from anyone who will say it to me, is that regardless of where you are today, nothing that you want to accomplish is impossible. You just need to know what it is and then create a plan. Ben said it himself, systems make the ordinary extraordinary, right? And so what is that system you're going to put in place financially? And then what's the vehicle you're going to use to fund it? If you're using real estate to fund it, then, then, then we, understand, we know exactly what we need to do to create what we need to create. If you're using real estate and other things to fund it, let's start with the other, let's, let's get the other things going, right? There's too many other ways that we can continue to earn, to save, to build, to get where we want to go. We just have to start doing it today, right? We can't, we can't listen to this series and then a year from now when, when, when it gets played again, say, oh yeah, I liked that last year. I, I haven't done anything. Right. I will. I, I'm, I'm way too guilty of that myself. Right. And so so let's make sure that we hold each other accountable to taking these steps and doing the exercises, doing the work, really looking at it and then making decisions about it. Because in the in the tail end of our time together, I, as I said, I really want to have conversations with you about what decisions you've made. What are you making? What are you doing? I'll tell you what I'm doing. Right. I think, I think I tell you that all the time. So, so, so the idea of, of just sharing with each other, here's what it is, let's keep, let's keep figuring it out together. Um, yeah. All right, guys. I love you dearly. Have an awesome afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow at nine o'clock. We'll see ya. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Bye-bye.